uh, in this lesson we will talk about the def uh, casting defects. We will look at what are the different reasons why castings get rejected at different stages and what we call as quality conformance. How do you make sure a customer says your quality casting conforms to our requirement? And then we try to classify defects because many times a wrong diagnosis leads to a wrong solution. So, we will talk about some major defects and how to diagnose them properly. And we also characterize them in sense of what are the meta causes, what are the causes, what are the control parameters we have to look at those. If you will start looking at uh, defects, first of all these numbers are scary numbers. In an, in an age when people are talking about PPM or parts per million rejections in plastics and sheet metal and machinings and many other areas, not to talk about pharmaceuticals and textiles and other manufacturing sectors, okay. Even the humble dabba walas in Bombay have parts per million rejections, I mean a wrong tiffin box supplied to the wrong customer, PPM level rejections. So, castings we are talking about even in a production cast iron foundry which are producing the same part year after year for example for railways even they have 2 to 5 percent rejections. If you go to other extreme steel foundries or aluminum foundries taking up jobbing orders which means every time they take up a new project they develop a casting and then manufacture anywhere from 10 to 20 percent rejections. The foundries where they are producing regularly some part at 30 percent rejection because they have no, no other opportunity to do so. They have to do it. There is no other solution for that which is sounds like a big wastage. You produce 5000 castings and put 1000 castings back into furnace sounds like a bad idea. It is a huge wastage of melting energy and also material wastage because every time you melt some things some metal does get lost not to mention production resources. That many castings you could have sold instead of that you are putting it back into furnace. It is a huge loss. The first step we mention is start tracking your rejections in PPM instead of percentages. 1 percent sounds very bad, sorry so sounds very good, but if you say 10,000 PPM sounds starts sounding bad and you start doing something about it, okay. So, if you look at PPM and this is a typical spectrum or average spectrum of many foundries, uh, jobbing, ductile iron, steel foundries if you look at it, this is a typical profile of those foundries. Shrinkage accounts for something like 60,000 ppm rejections. You have to convert what is that in percentages, okay, 6 percent you can say, all right. Gas porosity and blowhole which are uh, kind of because of gas not being vented properly, then you have cold shut and misrun which is not filling properly, okay. Then inclusions which should not be there, sand and slag, then cracks and distortion which are because of cooling, okay. Then other few defects like scabbing and flash and these account for few more percentages. So, overall you are looking at something like 10 percent rejections in this foundry. There are foundries where, uh, where it is amazingly production foundries, mechanized foundries also talk about 10 to 15 percent rejections and that is bad news. We need to look at how to handle that. So, how do we analyze those defects? First thing is when you look at defect, look at them like Sherlock Holmes. We all have heard Sherlock Holmes, right? Analyze them, look at them. First look at appearance. Is it a projection which means it is a unwanted bump on the part or is it a depression or a cavity or it is a discontinuity like a crack is a discontinuity or surface is not good, okay. It is not a surface finish, it could be surface appearance is not good, okay. Or it is incomplete part or is it incorrect shape or is it some inclusions are there which should not be there. These are the seven major classifications of defects and we have kind of followed the AFS and British standards here. We have just made slight changes here, but this gives you the first cut of how to look at defect in terms of its appearance. Second you look at whether it is in the outside or it is inside, it is external defect or internal defect, okay. Second classification. Third look at is it a critical defect, okay, which cannot be repaired at all or it is a minor defect, possible defect or repairable defect that gives you some implication immediately. Next, when was it discovered? Have you discovered just at the casting stage itself or after fettling and rough machining or after finished machining or is it discovered when the car is already running on the road and suddenly something cracks that is serious. 
Okay, so at what stage you discover also is important. So if you make a graph, and if you put your rejections in your foundry in these four quadrants, you start in looking at where I should pay more attention. Okay, anything which is discovered late and high criticality is a danger zone, and you should immediately tackle that because you have a serious chance of getting into lawsuits and going to court or paying a big penalty for, for those rejections. On the other hand, something which is discovered early and it's not very critical, you can ignore for the moment, although in the long run you should take care of that. So the first thing is to map your defects in PPM chart. Number two, classify those defects and see which quadrant they fall into so you can start paying attention. Remember one thing, all of us cannot pay attention to all the things all the time in your life. You can only pay attention to some things at some point of time. So if you can at least focus on what is important, critical, that is the starting point. Now this is an important slide and we will spend some time on it. So when you say conformance criteria, 100 years back if you got the shape right, like those statues, is good enough. Now at this point of time, in the last 10 years, the internal integrity, the property, uh, sorry, internal no blow holes and no cracks and and uh, no inclusions, integrity start becoming very important. So radiographic quality is what you want. What people are now started demanding now is also properties. Your test bar is no longer sufficient. How do we know that the entire casting, the properties are within the range? Okay, properties are getting demanded now. So there are three conformance criteria: the shape, integrity, and the properties in that order of importance. Okay. Now, how do we link certain things now? If you say your geometry is primarily linked to your tooling design, if you can get your tooling design right, dimensions and shapes and feature, using various allowances, you can get your shape right, tolerance is right, plus or minus, very tight. Integrity is where you have the three major events. We said casting is all about just three steps. Create a cavity, fill it properly, let it solidify properly, and you are done. Integrity is achieved. Let's go into detail there. Cavity creation, make sure there is no mismatch, no flash, no scab. There are defects arising out of a badly made mold. The next you see unfilling and blow hole and gas porosity, these are defects coming because of poor filling of the mold cavity. And the third one is your things like shrinkage and hot air and distortion and swelling because of solidification not being controlled. Okay, there are three events and we will focus on that in this course. Then property which comes from material and the process parameters, there you have things like segregation and hard spots and stents which you need to start worrying and people are demanding that these properties must be under control. Okay. So as you go along in the course, we will start looking at which parameters affect which properties and which defect and how do we control those parameters. So I am just laying the ground for what we are going to learn in this course and the importance of certain things here. So let's look at some of those. First is cavity creation. Okay, if the cavity is not closed properly, you have two kinds of defects. One is across parting plane. The parting plane is where the molds meet. If the part, if the two mold house are not meeting properly, you get flash. But if they're meeting, but they're moving across each other uh, along the parting plane, you get a mismatch defect. And both the pictures you see here. That is a cavity creation or closure there. Next. The filling has again three kinds of issues. One is it is not filled completely at all, where you get cold shut and misrun. Second is it has filled completely, but it has, it has some solid particles which should not be there, like slag and, uh, and, and sand, if it is sand molding. Third is gaseous entrapments which should not be there, essentially discontinuities. So small holes are gas porosity, big holes are blow holes. These two should not be there. Okay. Now shrinkage is the third step in the process. And when casting is solidifying, you can get either internal shrinkage or external shrinkage. Again, you see three different types of, of shrinkage here. Porosity is a small shrinkage. Many times people get confused with gas porosity and shrinkage porosity. And we'll slowly we'll look at it shortly how do you distinguish between these two very clearly without any 
and then you may have pipe which may extend into the casting, you may have a sink or a corner shrinkage, these are all different avatars or varieties of shrinkage defects and we look at why these form and how these form and how do you control that. Last thing is even after casting is solidified it is continuing to cool to room temperature and as it continues to cool you get stresses in the, in the casting and these stresses if they get released they become distortion or cracks, if they do not get released they become internal stresses which will distort the casting when it is in the service or even when you are doing heat treatment. All these are issues for metal casting. Now let us look at some of the major defects here, mismatch. Okay. How do you make a nice column, uh, look at those type, appearance, a mismatch is a shape irre irregularity. Okay. Defect size, it could be small mismatch or a large mismatch depending on how much it is gone. Location outside on the surface. Consistency, location can be slightly varying and, uh, and amount can be slightly varying. When do you see that? The moment you shake out the casting. Until then you do not know, mismatch has happened. Okay. How do you know mismatch happened? Visual inspection is enough. This is a nice way of characterizing or how do you identify the defect. Now we also want to find out how to control that. So meta cause means generic cause is incorrect pattern plate which can happen because of manufacturing misalignment. It could be because of improper molding which means it is ramming and closure is not proper or it could be mold misalignment which means mold pins are deformed perhaps. So you can start looking at details scientifically the causes for that. Remember even for mismatch which is a very simple defect it may not be easy to figure out what is the root cause. Sometimes everything is fine okay, and there was one case where we really could not figure out. We looked at all those cases and we could not figure out. Finally we found that the pattern plate, it was a pattern plate, uh, same plate where we had both the halves on the same plate. Okay. The two pattern house were manufacturing defect itself. We did not uh, even suspect that. The mismatch was coming directly from the tooling itself, but it can happen from any source. Shrinkage porosity, this looks suspiciously like blow hole. In fact, many foundries and many OEMs they say any hole in the casting is called as a blow hole. Okay. Any hole is called as a blow hole. And this looks like a blow hole here. Okay. But how do you know it is shrinkage porosity? Number one, the surface is rough. Shrinkage porosity always is rough. Blow hole smooth is all, uh, surface is always smooth. Okay. Defect size can be small to medium, then you say cavity or porosity. Location will be fairly consistent, usually inside, usually near the hot spot of the casting, if you can find out where the hot spot is. Okay. And you discover it unfortunately only at machining stage or if you have done a radiography, you can look at it, find at that stage. And why it happens, we will, dis we will discuss that in great detail in this course. Okay. But here is a quick uh, details of that. Now gas porosity is what I mentioned that you get confused with shrinkage porosity. And these are small cavities but they are smooth. So you need to have a magnifying glass with at least 10 magnification and the moment you see you know the surface is smooth and gas bubble will always produce a smooth hole. You know it is a gas porosity. The other, other way to figure out is that this is not consistent. The location is not consistent, the extent is not consistent, keeps changing from casting to casting. Shinkai porosity is little more consistent than gas porosity. Okay. And the root causes, mainly it is your composition and your uh, treatment and things like that. Now blow holes I mentioned was again like, like gas porosity but they are bigger holes. Okay. And they can come, remember where are the causes of gases in the casting? You get gas from your entrapped air which is first point. Then you have gas from, if it is a binder, binder of combustion. If you have a sand mold, you have a moisture becoming steam. Okay. All these are causes for your gas and that gas if it does not escape, you end up with blow holes. Either large number of small blow holes or big blow holes, especially in your course, you get big blow holes. And finally cracks which look like that and cracks there is nothing you can do about it. In fact it is very sad to see large castings cracking because even cutting the casting to put it back in furnace is very expensive business. So you need to avoid those cracks. Okay. And uh, so here what we have seen is uh, we need to start looking at rejections in per parts per million and not per cent, not parts per hundred. 
okay and this is not a not a easy thing to solve after all casting is you are producing casting because it is complex geometry and there are large number of material parameters both metal as well as a mold material and coarse and all other things okay process parameters are too many foundries are not necessarily getting high skill labor you have other challenges so with all this it is miracle that people are producing you know even that i would say 5% 10% rejection levels it's surprise that it is not more than that it is thanks to all the experienced people who are using their experience to get good quality castings so idea of this course is to kind of look into that try to rationalize that experience into some kind of guidelines or equations so at least you should be able to when you see a problem you should say hey this is maybe because this reason let us control that and try it out the idea is even without using software just by using some other logic in this course you should be able to figure out why some defect has happened and how to solve that on industrial parts okay and we'll show you a lot of examples in industrial parts even as you go through the course okay and remember defects have a big problem defects also affect the morale of the company i mean customer coming and shouting at you because his production got held up because you your just in time lot got completely rejected is a big problem for everyone so we want to avoid quality issues in in foundries okay